MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Sayyidina Abu Bakr used to do something so special. And there is a famous statement by Sayyidina Umar. And this is actually to all the speakers before me. He found out that Sayyidina Abu Bakr does something every morning before Fajr. And he followed him, and finally he went to that house that every morning Sayyidina Abu Bakr goes to. Found out it's a blind lady who Sayyidina Abu Bakr used to say, serve her. So he said a very famous statement, some of you may know. You made the job of the person to follow you very difficult. So may Allah make mine easy. Ya Rabbi Amin. And the second thing I want to say, I moved to California very recently. You probably know Mufti Abdul Wahab. About four months, and the reason is sunny California, you will see sun. For the last 24 hours, we have only seen rain that we haven't seen. He is the one who sent ghayth in the Quranic language is the rescue. It's rain. So this is what Miftah Institute brought to us. A 24 hours of rain, and we are in dire need of it. And I'm sure also we as Muslims, we made a lot of istighfar. Because Allah said on the, as Sayyidina Nuh told us in the Quran, وَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا He was telling his people, just ask Allah for forgiveness, plenty. He is all forgiving, and he will send the rain. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings always the Miftah Institute, Southern California, bring with them the rain, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana, inna ka sami'un mujibu dua. Allahumma ni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa qalbin la yakhsha, wa nafsin la tashba' wa dua'in la yusma'. By the name of the most gracious, the one and only who brought us all here and gave us the energy to sit for six hours to learn about him and his book, I start my speech. And peace and blessing on the one, without him, we will not be here. Without him, we will not know what is the Quran, let alone what the anchor mean. And all the blessings goes to the followers who were also the means to teach us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all, Ya Rabbi Ameen, young and old, follow their footsteps. About three months ago when Mufti Abdul Wahab called me and we were discussing what should we call this conference. And I just suggested, let's, let's give a name that we don't hear it often. And if you, I don't know if you remember that. And then we left it at that point and then I got the title. What is Anchor? What is Quran? And I'm going to be speaking about, and I'm a physician, so I'm going to talk about cure. Where, this is a triangle, and how this triangle is connected. So what is anchor? If any, which I'm sure all of you have seen pictures, you, some of you may have used it. It's basically, it's a heavy object connected to a rope or a chain. And then at the, what do you do? You throw it so the ship stays stable. And as they say, and if you look in the Wikipedia, it's a very interesting definition. And think of the Quran, and think of our life, and think what is happening to us, and why we are not anchored. Usually they say sailors, if they do not put the anchor, the vessel, the ship, will drift away. And the currents will take the ship. That's what the Quran should be for me and you. It's my anchor that keeps me going. In all the difficulties you heard from Imam Suhaib, from Sheikh Asim, from uh, Sheikh Abdullah, all the difficulties we go through, there's only one thing that's gonna keep me going and stable and fixed is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the most important thing for this to be the anchor for you and me is what is the Quran? And I always say this to myself, basics. Do you know what is the Quran? How do you define it? Kalamullah. It's the word of Allah. Send it through the beloved, as Sheikh Abdullah just shared with us, through Jibreel, alayhi salam, to Rasul, alayhi salatu wasalam. Written between two covers. 
starts by Al-Fatiha, ends by An-Nas. Too unique. No other book has it. Too unique, other than what I just shared. Number one, it's a miracle, which we all know. But the most important thing, and that's what all the speakers were asking you to do, المتعبد بتلاوته It's an act of worship. Just pick up the Quran, open it, struggle to read to start, and even struggle more to stay reading. Keep telling yourself, this is an act of worship. متعبد بتلاوته That's the Quran. Anchor the Quran. And what is a cure? And if I may ask, if you are, want to show me hands, how many of you in this room have at any point in their life used the Quran as medicine? Alhamdulillah. That's not too bad. That's not too bad whatsoever. And the Quran, when you look at the names of the Quran, scholars divide them into three categories. One is what is the Quran, that, the being of the Quran, description, and what it came for. For example, it's a book. That's the being. This is the book that no doubt in it. And what did it come? How Allah described it? Mighty. It's a mighty book. It's not just a book. You buy it, and then after a few days, you don't like it and throw it. No, it's Aziz. Then the most important is the third, and that's what we all have been trying to share with you. And the question to everybody, what does the Quran do to you? What does it do to your heart? And think of yourself in Ramadan and the tears you've been shedding all the time. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> and all the tears you've been shedding in Ramadan, what happened to them? You're the same person. You're the same living, you're living in the same living situation. What happened? And where is the shifa? And I'm going to come to it. We get sick in three ways. Your body hurts, you get headache, maybe a bone pain, maybe a stomach ache. That's external. And then we get mental illness. And walillahi alhamdulillah, Muslim community is waking up. And they are talking about it. And it's a major issue. And I'm not exaggerating. Less than a year ago, 70 to 80 percent of the teenagers Muslim I see in my office for OBGYN reasons are suffering or already being treated for anxiety and or depression. This is our children. I'm not talking about non-Muslims. Don't brush it. Don't say it's not my children. And still every single day here is the same. So we have mental illness. And the third, which I'm going to spend a little bit more time on, for diseases and sickness that very few of us even know they are a disease, let alone acknowledge they have it. And these are the diseases of the heart. And the Quran came in it clearly to cure the third. So let's talk about the first one quickly, the body, ache and pain. Sayyida Aisha narrated this. It's in, a, in Sahih Muslim. She said, when a Rasul used to get sick, yashtaki, that's the word they use, get sick. She didn't specify, but, but external sickness. What did he do? She said he used to read the Mu'awidat, the three quls, and then he blow and wrap and all his body. And when he gets sick, when he got sick, in the last sickness that he died, alayhi salatu wasalam, I did the same thing, she, Sayyida Aisha. I used to read the three quls, but look at this one. But I used to blow on his hand, and I pick up his hand, and I want, with his hand, he rub his body, he rub his body, because his hands, alayhi salatu wasalam, has way more barakah than my hand. And he, he was cured. 
except the one when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibn al-Qayyim put a beautiful, there's many hadiths about cure with the Quran, the body. And Ibn al-Qayyim said a beautiful, and you can find this in Zad al-Ma'ad. And he said, so why not everybody, when they read a verse from the Quran, they get cured? You all probably are asking this question. So I have a headache, and then I go and read in Mu'awwidat, but it doesn't go away. And I have to go and take this medicine and that. And he said, and then he talked about himself, what he did. He said, the person who will be cured by the Quran, and I'm talking about physically, they have to know with certainty, yaqeenun wa sidq, that's the two words he used. Yaqeen is, is certainty, and sidq, you are truthful with Allah, and you're truthful with yourself that this is gonna cure me. It is not. And all of us do that. Unfortunately, I'm number one. I tried this, I tried that, it didn't work. Let me try the Quran. That's not how you get cured. You don't pick it up as a last resort, and maybe you pick it up as a first and for sure, and Allah will put the shifa in it. Mental illness, that's a long story, but I will share one verse because I want to focus on the diseases of the heart and what Allah said, and I don't want to go over time. Mental illness, anxiety, depression, it's a state of instability in me, inside me. I don't know if you have seen somebody with anxiety, real, and you don't brush them, listen to them, see their body, their, see their eyes, hear the way they speak. They are in a state of turbulence. And what did Allah said to us? You all know the verse. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub. Verily, by the remembrance of Allah, hearts will reach serenity, stability. But that doesn't happen. When I have the anxiety, then I'm going to go and pick up the, the Quran. It's not a tablet. When I am always attached to the Quran, as Imam Suhaib was keep reminding you and me, that it is part of my life, that how many time, what time frame I give every day to the Quran. When I need the Quran to cure me, it's there for me. As the Rasul والسلام, taught you and me, تعرف إلى الله في الرخاء يعرفك في الشدة. Know Allah in days of ease. He will know you when you need him in days of difficulty. So don't leave the Quran on the shelf. And then when I have headache, I am going to pick it up and I'm going to be like Imam Ibn al-Qayyim who treated himself with zamzam and he read on it the Quran. It's not going to work this way. You have to have a constant relationship with that book way more than the phone, than the TikTok, than the social media, than the friends, than the, the food. And then when I need it, it comes to me. Let's talk about diseases of the heart. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? What is the disease and what is the cure? And it's all in the Quran. And because of the time, I'm gonna share two only. And I will bring you the verses in the Quran and you will see how he subhanahu explained the disease to us and the treatment. One of the first diseases we all have and no one is immune myself number one, and in different levels, but living in this day and age is called hubbu dunya. We love this world. We love it. We fight each other for it. We hate each other for it. We cut relationships for it. Am I correct? Am I exaggerating? Alhamdulillah. Now let's see, what did Allah say? How do you know it's a disease? Is when you know it's, hurt, it's hurtful or it's not worthy. And Allah said this in Surah Al-Hadid. In many places in the Quran, Allah talks about dunya. But I'm going to bring you this one. In Surah Al-Hadid, Allah said the following. I'lamu. And learn this, my dear brothers and sisters. When Allah tells you and me, no. That means you really need to know this. And it's for your benefit. It's not for me. Allah will not get anything extra if I was 
knowledgeable or not, if I prayed or not, if I obeyed him or not. So he said, اعلموا, know, أنما الحياة الدنيا. Verily, this life, this world is the following. Those of you who know Arabi, you know what ma mean. Adatu hasr. Allah emphasized and then said ma, meaning everything is going to come after it. That's it. This is what life. And if I, I didn't have that big crowd, I would have asked you, tell me what is dunya for you. But again, because of the size, normally what you hear from people, fun, children, wealth, travel, vacations, that's life. Right? That's not what Allah said. The one who created it. No. Verily this life. لَعِبٌ وَلَهْبٌ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Let's translate. اِعْلَمُوا No. Everybody. Young and old. Teach your children. So when they grow up, they don't suffer and struggle like we are all now. Verily, this life is but la'ib. You know what's la'ib? Play. Like children playing. Lahu, amusement. Ilamu, annam al-hayad la'ibun wa lahun wa zina. It's beauty. He did not negate that it is not a beauty. But he's reminding me what kind of a beauty. And then boastfulness between you. I have a bigger house. My job is this. My salary is that. I live in this neighborhood. I live there. My children went to this college, to this university. It's all about boastful. It's, it's a competition, fierce one. But about what? I've said this recently to the sisters, and I said, we so much compete about dunya. Why don't we compete about akhirah? Why don't we say, I want the best house in the best neighborhood with the best neighbor in Jannah? Why not? And it's not free. You have to work for it. Ilamu, no. That's what dunya is all about. And then in another verse, in Yunus, he gives it to you. The real fact, we see it every single day. He said it. إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Verily this dunya is what? مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا It's like rain. أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Send it down to you. What happened? فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ Then the water mixed with the vegetations on this earth. Right? And then, فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتِ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَأْكُلُ النَّاسُ وَالْأَنْعَامِ What people eat and animals eat. And then, حَتَّى إِذَا أَخْذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا وَزَّيَّنَتْ Give me your heart and brain about this. And Allah is saying, then dunya becomes beautiful. And people think they will live forever. You know, you become in your 30s. You have finished your, you, you achieved your goal in your career. You got married. You have children. And you know by that age 40, these days in California, it's 30. The cutoff is 30. And now you got it all. What will happen? And that's what Allah said. حَتَّى إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا وَزَّيَّنَتْ Beautiful, it beautified itself. وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا and the people living on it think they have it. قادرون عليها سبحانك أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا Our decree came in. And during the day or the night. أتاها أمرنا فجعلناها حصيدة We made it ashes. كأن لم تغنى بالأمس As if it was not beautiful yesterday. How many times, if not every day, you hear this person and that person, the multimillionaire, the house, whatever it is, the car they drive, the children they have, and they died, and they left it. All. They thought they had it. It's all in my hand, but they left it. Or they are still alive, but Allah took it. That's the disease. And that's the treatment. 
We read the Quran. I'm sure all of you have read Surah Yunus, and every one of you have read Surah Al Hadid. But I didn't make it. I didn't think of it. I didn't think it's even a disease, and the treatment is in the Quran. Second one, so I don't take a lot of your time. I know some of you, not all of you, very tired. May Allah reward you. Ya Rabbi, Ameen. Second major disease, we all have it. And Imam Suhaib beautifully, pay, I hope you all paid attention, how we look at each other. I am better because whatever I am. And I, my assessment, Allah knows who I am in his sight. Kibber, arrogance, huge disease. And it is in the Muslim community, in Masajid, in the people who are practicing. And you see it outside also. And who was the arrogant one who Allah described in the Quran because of his money? Qarun. And this is in Surah Al Qasas stories. Inna Qarun. And Allah now telling you and me the story. And stories in the Quran is not for fun. And just so we have entertainment. That's not Allah. Every story is talking to you and talking to me and telling me, learn. And if it's a good story, be like them. And if it's not a good story, then don't be like him. Let me share the story. And let all reflect. Am I at one point in my life, acted like Qarun, diseased my heart. Qarun kana min qawmi Musa. Qarun was from the people of Musa. Fabagha alayhim. He acted unjustly. Why? Wa ataynahu min al kunuz. We gave him wealth. Don't tell me millions. Not even billions. Don't tell me Steve uh, Job and don't tell me uh, uh, Jeff Bezos. No. Because look how Allah described him. We gave him treasures. The keys. The keys of the treasures is so hard for a huge group of strong people to carry it. How much he had. And Allah gave you an idea. Whatever you have, Qarun had more. Whatever hard work you did, Qarun did more. And what did he say? It lahu qawmuh. Now the treatment. Here the, in this story is the disease and the treatment is, comes together. Qala lahu qawmuh. His people looked at him and says, La tafrah. Don't be so happy and arrogant and showing off and thinking, thinking everybody is less than you. Allah doesn't like that. When your reference point is Allah, this should give, it starts in your heart literally like a war. Ah, Allah doesn't love it. I'm not going to do it. Don't be so happy. Oh, I got the new phone. Oh, I had this job. Now I got a raise. Don't be too happy. So why did Allah give me the money then? Explain it in the next verse. Use what Allah gave you. And Allah is telling you and me, Telling him, but it's basically to you and me, what Allah gave you. Money, wealth, stocks, real estate, whatever it is, companies, use it for your akhirah, not for benefits of Allah. So what do I do in life? Don't forget your share in this life, but the priority is the akhirah. The priority is not collecting or investing or spending or showing off or moving from one house to the bigger because that house has better view or bigger or more rooms. That's not why Allah gave me the money, let alone to boost about it. Live. Live. You know what's a nasib for dunya? What is the share in the dunya for you and me? As Rasul explained it. من أصبح آمناً في سربه 
معافا في بدنه يملك قوت يومه كأنما حيزت له الدنيا Each one in this room has dunya, all of it. This is what he said, alayhi salatu wassalam. Anyone wake up in the morning has a roof on the top of their head and safe in his corner, in his house, and has enough food for the day. Let him come and see our kitchens and fridges. May Allah forgive me, number one. He or she has all dunya. So we all have our share of dunya. We all. How did Qarun responded? And I'm going to say it and see if this is going to sound familiar. قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي I worked hard for it. I worked hard for it. You all are looking at me. It's not my words. That's the anchor. That's the anchor we're talking about. And Allah responded immediately. Alam ya'lam anna qad ahlakna min qablihi man huwa akthar jama'a, akshad quwwatan wa akthar jama'a. Doesn't he know, Qarun? We have destroyed people before him, had way more money, much stronger. But you and me, subhanAllah, I love this story. You and me, we are weak. We look at people of power and money and status and in me say, I wish I have it. قَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ The people who doesn't think of the akhirah. يَا لَيْتَ لَنَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوتِيَ قَارُونَ I wish we have what he has. إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ He has a lot. How fortunate. Does that sound familiar? Do we say this to ourselves when we see people with more than what we have? The people who have knowledge, that's the cure. Now, now he's, again, I told you, in this, in this story, he's going to give you the disease and the, and the cure immediately. Those who have knowledge, they saw. They saw him. They saw when he came out with his entourage, with all the people with him. The people with no knowledge said, ah, I love it. I want her car. I want her house. I want his job. I want his power. But not the people with knowledge. قَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ وَيْلَكُمْ وَوْءٌ يُوْمْ ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ What Allah has way better than this 50, 60, 70, 80. Hundred years. قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ سِنِينَ How long you lived in this life? We're going to be asked. There. قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِّينَ We stayed a day or a two. Ask those who are counting. People of knowledge. The cure. Knowledge and knowledge and knowledge. وَيْلَكُمْ Woe on you. The hereafter is way better than this temporary mirage. And immediately Allah says, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ We made the earth open and swallowed him and the people with him who they wanted to be like him. Arrogance, huge disease, huge. We all have it. Cure is what Allah said. Focus on the Akhirah. As Mufti yesterday said in a beautiful Jumu'ah khutbah, what is your point of reference? I love this statement. What is the point of reference? When I want to make a decision, what pushed me, what pushes me, all of us, to say yes or no? Do it or don't do it. Rarely it's him. Or the question that I always try to ask, is that what you want me to do? Is that pleasing to you? وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا Allah said this in Surah Al-Isra. We send down the Qur'an. It's secure. But to whom? Believers. Real one. The wrongdoers, the people who are focused on this dunya, it will make them even more 
heedless and they are losers. And I will end up with this verse which is so dear to my heart. And it's also in Surah Yunus. Ya Yuhannas, people. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ People, we have sent to you. This is your Lord, your creator and mine. He's talking to you and me. جَاءَتْكُمْ We have sent to you. And he didn't say it's Quran. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ Came to you, words of admonition from your Lord. وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ It's a cure to what's in the heart. وَهُدَى Guide. وَرَحْمَةٌ Mercy لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Again. And now this is the best one. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ Say to them, let them be happy with the, mer- with the grace of Allah. And most of the scholars of tafsir will tell you the grace here is the Quran. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ Be happy by the Quran and the sunnah of Rasul Rasulullah And he cure, and he points the disease and the cure. It's way better than what they are collecting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those. يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ who they listen to the words of admonition and they follow the best of it. And I seek refuge from Allah that I remind you and forget myself. Jazakumullah khayran, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ila ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathir.